in terms of uh, in terms of leadership and and the things I'm passionate about professionally, uh, I've come to believe that if you get the uh, the people decisions right at work, that's that's uh, takes care of just about everything else. And so I I try to make that my priority, and and then I try to make sure we have as much fun as possible every day. And we we're in a serious business and we're in a serious time. Uh, I just think if if we can have a little bit of fun or a lot of fun uh, in doing what we do, that, that, uh, that, that's the kind of place I want to be a part of. Um, you know, whenever I talk to other leaders, I always like to, to hear about what other people are reading. Uh, I'm, I'm a reader. And, and so I'm, 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 I'm a Welch fan. I'm a Pat Lencioni fan. And then more recently, I've been reading uh, some, uh, some books by Cy Wakeman. So those are a few of my, my personal influencers. And uh, let's see what else. What else was on my list from um, from Catherine? Uh, uh, my journey to the Iowa Clinic. Um, Iowa Clinic has been known uh, is really well known in physician led health throughout the Midwest. And so I've had the opportunity to kind of watch from afar some of the innovative things that the clinic was doing. And when I had the opportunity to talk with them about the opportunity to be the CEO, I was uh, I was very excited about it. Uh, they've got a great culture, values. They're physician led, which is important for me. And it's a unique thing in healthcare these days. Uh, there's a lot of corporatization happening in healthcare that that uh, I strenuously try to avoid in, in my roles. And uh, and I think they're really focused on the three big things that that all of us in healthcare are focused on, which is we call the triple aim, uh, which is patient experience, affordability of care, and clinical quality outcomes. And so uh, their vision and mine absolutely aligned on, on those things. And so I couldn't be more excited to, to get up there and, and learn more about the community and, and serve in any way I can. I love that. Well, gosh, here we are in the middle of a pandemic. This has to be tremendously hard for you and your family and, you know, to take this new position during this time. I mean, what have been some of the I guess leadership skills that you've had to rely on, Ben, during this time, and uh, you know, being in the hospital world. So, what uh, what do you think has helped you during this time? Well, you, you know, for me, um, the the company that I'm part of now, that I've been and and Iowa Clinic as well. Um, like I said, they're they're physician led, so mm -hmm. I'm kind of the guy in the suit that gets to be the face of of the business at times. Uh, we really do have a, a strong founding and and evidence-based medicine and good clinical guidance. And, and at a time when, you know, you, you turn on one channel and you get, you get uh, some interesting data and you turn on another channel and you get some interesting data that looks a lot different. And then you get everywhere in between and there's a lot of fear in the public working w directly with doctors and nurses and pharmacists and people that um, have actual real world experience in this stuff and do it every day. And that read the, the best clinical research uh, for me has been, uh, it's just such a grounding and guiding thing uh, in terms of how do we set policies, how do we best take care of patients, how do we survive, you know, as a business in this environment. And, and so I, I feel like I've been very fortunate in that regard. You know, healthcare has been hit extremely hard, like, like uh, from, a, from a financial standpoint, but uh, it, from a, in, in terms of doing what we do and taking care of patients, gosh, I, I just feel very blessed to have all those kinds of resources here. Uh, since I'm not a clinician, especially. Yeah. Um, yeah, this has been a, a challenging time, and you're so right. The different things that you look at, sort of, you don't know really what to believe. Um, have there been some public resources that you think have been really valuable as tools so, so that um, maybe we could go to that is evidence-based? science that you recommend? I know uh, the Greater Des Moines Partnership, which is, uh, we're tied to that organization. They have CEOs of our healthcare providers on quite a bit. And there is one website, for instance, called rt.live, which has transmission rate. I don't know if, if that's one of the sites you use or some other ones that kind of gauge, you know, what you're thinking is around what's happening from a day-to-day -day basis. So a lot of the, a lot of what I've relied on is uh, obviously it's three physicians that kind of deal in that all the time. They've they've helped me with that, but a lot you know the colleges. So there's the American College of Pediatrics, American College of Internal Medicine, American College of Family Medicine, and I'm not using the exact acronym, the exact names, but they all it's all you know some variation of that. Mm -hmm. And then there's been some 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 burgeoning studies coming out of places like Stanford and Harvard, Johns Hopkins that have some pretty good 
um, there's some pretty good information from people that don't really have a dog in the fight in terms of, you know, one way or the other, or they you know, want to achieve something. It's, it's pretty good clinical evidence, and a lot of it's early. So that's tough, but it's, uh, it's being well studied by some thoughtful people that are, that are regarded in their community. And, and I, I found that that's so much better than, you know, some news anchors interpretation of, of something that they heard from, you know, two other people that probably originated on Twitter or something like that. So. Well, I appreciate that so much. Well, it's interesting to know you like motorcycles. That's really interesting. And I think your book question, we might pivot a little bit and ask what people like to read because that's so interesting. That's kind of a, uh, and so Cy Wakeman is somebody that uh, you're really fond of. I love that. So, and Netflix, what's your favorite Netflix show that you're like binging right now? Uh, in terms of the ones I, I'm not embarrassed to say, <laughs> Uh, I'm watching uh, The Last Dance, which is a documentary about uh, the, the Bulls and Michael Jordan in the 90s. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and then there's one called uh, Ozark, which I'm, which I'm pretty deep into, which most people are familiar with. It doesn't do anything good in terms of promoting the mid-Missouri area reputation. I'm about 40 minutes from Lake of the Ozarks uh, from where I sit right now. And it's, it's, uh, it's not, uh, not really based in reality, but gosh, it's a great show in my opinion, so. It really is. The character development is is amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's a great, great show. Well, thank you so much, Ben. Um, really, really appreciate it. So let's go around the Zoom room here. We're at uh, 1144, so we're doing great on time. And we'd love to have everybody introduce yourselves, more specifically what you do, your organization, and tell us a book you're reading right now, or maybe a favorite author or a book that's really been inspiring to you right now. That's huge. And then also maybe answer the question, you know, what, is, what are you and your company doing right now that is particularly innovative during the COVID time? What has been something that you've been really proud of at your company and or what has super inspired you during this time? So we're gonna go really positive on this. So, um, Let's see here, Christy Burma, you're first on our uh, confirmed attendee list. So we're gonna start with you. Thanks, Catherine. Thanks, Ben, appreciate the introduction. Um, just by way of background, I'm a University of Iowa grad and I lived in Denver for 15 years and I got a come backpack sent to me and that's what uh, brought my husband and I back to raise our family in Iowa. So we've been back here for about 20 years now. Um, Athene is a financial services company. So we have about 1400 employees. Most of them are in West Des Moines but we do have employees in Bermuda and various locations ac across the US. So my job is pretty expansive in terms of um, various employment law that I need to understand. Um, we also, we're also in Canada. Um, I've been here about 12 years and we're currently in the final phase of our repopulation plan. So we did four waves. The first was a volunteer wave at about 20% of our employees. And the last wave was today, we have about 80% in our office. And wave four is just allotted for later on with those with underlying health conditions. So we've said, we don't have a return date for you to stay out of the office, it's better for you. So we have about um, a total of 20, 15, 20% any given day, depending on issues, taking care of um, family members and things like that. And then of course, the return to school is our biggest issue right now, trying to live with how do we help our parents that are trying to homeschool their children essentially and nobody knows what that schedule is so that's pretty tough for us um, on a positive note I would say I've been very impressed with the resilience of our employees so we closed down March 13th we gave everybody uh, basically an hour's notice to evacuate the building we thought we had an exposure we didn't end up having one but we did a full fumigation sent everybody home and we worked with about six percent in our office over a three-month period so we able we were able to effectively transition but we also were blessed that we moved a lot of our learning and development online. So this is a big time when um, learning and development is oftentimes cut. Um, and we proceeded with that and we actually implemented new employee resource groups for our diversity and inclusion initiatives. So really trying to focus on not leaving people behind, even more critical now to make sure everyone is seen um, and has, a, has a, a way to voice concerns throughout this pandemic because it becomes a bit more difficult in terms of communication. Um, on a quickly, not a positive note, we have seen a higher um, instance of depression and mental illness, uh, which I'm sure you're not surprised. I don't have a strong correlation, but I have been doing a lot of reading and I would have to say there is a correlation with isolation and all those factors. So we're trying to keep an eye on that. Um, 
I did go through Johns Hopkins contact tracing certification. I recommend for anybody on the phone, he's absolutely right. You know, get connected with those organizations that don't have anyone in the hunt here. Um, it takes about two hours to do the certification, but it's really good background knowledge on what this disease is and how it's transmitted so that you can be factual as you're talking with your employees. Um, and then I would say, you're, you know, you said your motto is have a little bit of fun along the way. My motto is work hard and play harder. So I like to make sure we have a lot of fun in and outside the office. And actually, Cy Wakeman's a good friend of mine. So you can't go wrong with her. She's a great lady, um, great things that she has, very inspirational. And her talks about your ego and letting your ego get in the way are just perfect uh, for anybody who's dealing with all this stuff in the world. She just level sets you in terms of where you need to be at times. So she's a great person. So, and I watch Ozark as well. <laughs> well, if she ever comes in town, I'd like to, I'd li I want to get a lunch. So let me know. <laughs> yeah, she's pretty expensive. And the days I used to have her, she was more like $2,000 a day. And now she's about $15,000 a day. So. <laughs> Ah, I was maybe, just, maybe just like an introduction at the airport then never mind there you go there you go maybe the chamber can bring her in or something that oh, yeah. awesome. be that's actually a really great idea that would be amazing oh my gosh yeah. sounds so, incredible well, through, uh, what's the way to get here <laughs> yay love it ben did you go any great restaurants when you were visiting west des moines uh let's see uh fire is it firebirds or fire something yeah, uh creek uh, and Firebird, and, right? Uh, we have both. Yeah, then we ate at, um, so uh, we ate at Wahlburgers, which is uh, just someplace I've always wanted to go, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, one of the country clubs there. So a lot, a lot, of, a lot of good uh, diverse dining. Got a lot of dining options. And then there's a, home, there's a homemade donut place called like, um, I can't remember what it's called, but Oops. I just, they, they made these hot little mini donuts, and that was like the best thing my kids had ever experienced it. Uh, Mahalo's. 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 There it was. Yeah. 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 Mahalo's. Yeah. Those are dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> low calorie, low calorie. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, thank you so much, Christy. And again, thank you for being uh, a highly valued chamber board member and on our exec committee. So thank you so much. Um, now excited to introduce Kevin Crowley, commercial manager with NAI Iowa Realty Commercial. <laughs> working on the sorry just, just had to unmute i'm sorry hey welcome welcome to the community so uh naiir realty commercial is a full service commercial real estate company we're an affiliate of iowa realty which if you're looking for homes we do sell homes just for a little commercial i don't but we have a lot of people that do uh and then you know welcome to west des moines it's uh, a great community i've lived in west des moines for almost 40 years now and it's uh, happy to be home. I'm originally from Boston, Massachusetts, and I've enjoyed my time here and uh, totally addicted to uh, Ozarks. And uh, my daughter has me watching us at Schitt's Creek right now. So <laughs> that's uh, kind of human, that's uh, easy relief after watching Ozarks. I, I, I can only watch one or two Ozarks at a time because it would just make me way too tense. But anyway, I loved it, loved, loved it all. But uh, welcome. I also, uh, I have children that are range anywhere from six years old to 34. So I have a daughter that's six going on seven. So uh, we love the West Des Moines School District and uh, it's been very successful for us. Well, great to meet you. Nice to meet you. Kevin is a big community champion and uh, knows everybody in this area. I, I swear he does. And he was just named the business records Commercial Real Estate Professional of the Year, which is a very big award. So Kevin, congrats on that award again. That's that's huge. What an honor. Thanks, Kevin. I'll butt in once more. And Ben, I, I'm actually uh, president of Polk County Health Services. So we do, I appreciate comments that uh, I think it was Mary made or who made about mental health earlier. Uh, I, I really, uh, working in with uh, Polk County Health Services and mental health uh, there's huge need in, in uh, our region, and so I really appreciated somebody bringing that up earlier, but I do spend a lot of time in the volunteering in that area also. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kevin, for all that you do for the community, making us stronger. We really, really appreciate it so much. I am excited to introduce Mary Thompson, President and CEO of Avora Group. Hey, thanks, Catherine. Nice to meet you, Ben, everybody else. Um, 
I have been with Evora Group and we just changed our name. We did a complete rebranding and rolled our new name out on June the 29th. So we're still answering the phones incorrectly um, and <laughs> making all kinds of missteps there. But um, anyway, we um, have been around for 25 years and um, started out as a consulting firm for landfills throughout the state of Iowa and the Midwest. Um, there's actually more to it than, um, than just a dump, just dumping trash. Um, we have a staff of engineers and environmental consultants. And then we also expanded and do work with um, underground storage tank releases um, whenever it, um, there's a, a compromised fueling system at a gas station and, and uh, petroleum is released. We do assessment on that and remediation and get that site to closure and clean up the environment. Um, we also, um, about a, let's see, 10 years ago or so, started a petroleum services company. So you'll um, often see our trucks around the Midwest at gas stations doing service work. So that's a little bit about our company. Um, and um, I am a transplant to Iowa. I was raised in um, Texas, went to school at Texas A&M, and I agree with what Kevin said. The, um, it is a fantastic place to raise kids. West Des Moines schools are the best. Um, this community has an awful lot to offer, and it is just so friendly and engaging, and I think that um, you and your family will, will certainly feel welcome here. Um, it's a, it's an odd time for you to be moving and reschooling your children, I, I will say, and, and that kind of leads me to, and, and um, I think Christy mentioned it also, the difficulty of the back to school des decisions. And I'd say that um, our workforce, as you can tell a little bit, and I'm not sure it's any different than anyone else's, but our workforce is very diverse. We have what would you, you would consider frontline employees um, they, um, that do our field work and our service work, and they didn't really have a choice about going home on March the 17th when we sent everybody else home. So I would say that um, that's probably been the most challenging thing is dealing with the diversity in our own workforce because um, some of our employees didn't get a choice about whether or not they were isolating at home and working from home. Um, we've brought most everyone back. Um, we do have a few uh, parents of school age children that don't have options right now and thought they were going to have different options come the fall. And I think that um, what, you know, I, I guess our approach is going to be remaining flexible with those people. Um, we don't intend to insist that they try to get childcare that they can't afford for the days that um, school won't be in session if that's a thing. Um, I don't know if you kept in, in touch, but last Friday, our governor kind of upended Des Moines plans. I don't think it impacted necessarily West Des Moines plans, but the Des Moines school district, they had a plan for coming back to school that apparently isn't going to fly anymore. So, and we've got a lot of Des Moines residents um, that, uh, that work here. But we're going to um, maintain flexible in addition to allowing people to work from home. They're now going to be allowed to work the hours that they want to work from home so that they can take care of their kids and help, you know, proctor the school process, um, that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a weird time, but that's kind of what we're doing and you know our people are definitely what has inspired me through this because boy you give them a task and they are working so this work from home thing um, really worked out you know nicely for us better than i would have anticipated um i'm also a huge ozark fan and schitt's creek is amazing i would i would also add that um as far as what i read you know um i i read a little bit of I read Sheryl Sandberg's book. You know, I'm a big fan of John Gordon, but mostly it's the, you know, I read fiction, just low brow, don't even think about it stuff. So um, nothing really, no proud moments to, <laughs> I'm not gonna enlighten anybody on that. Um, and lastly, my office is not painted pink and I am not pink. Something is with my webcam and I noticed this last week on a call, but. Um, so 
but on Zoom, now I'm the lady in the pink office. It's really not pink though. So anyway, that's all I got. Welcome, Ben. It's good to have you. Thank you. I, I, uh, it's good to know Ozark is watched so prolifically in Iowa. I feel like I'm going to be a good fit. <laughs> yep. You certainly will. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Mary. You, you look great in pink. It's fabulous. <laughs> it looks wonderful on you. So I love it. I love it. it it's awesome. Thank you so much, Mary. Um, I'm excited to introduce Ann Hudson, Managing Director of Principal Midwest Business Center. So, Ann. Well, hello and well, welcome to Iowa. And a little bit about our firm is uh, we are a full-fledged financial advisory firm for principal and we have about 70 producers associated with our office. Some throughout Iowa, most of them here in West Des Moines and a few downtown. Um, we are working in conditions, obviously, I'm back in the office, so which is, which is nice, but we're on limited basis. We do a rotation right now, and we're going to be back in West Des Moines in a couple of weeks. Um, we, uh, it's, it's been interesting, but it's been, it's been kind of fun to get everybody up and running electronically since we are part of principal. That helps because principal has done a great job with getting everybody working at home, everybody functioning and not really missed a beat in business, but um, we are a very much face-to-face -face portion of the business since we like to work with directly with people. So getting our guys who are not tech savvy up and running on Zoom or Teams or, or anything electronic was probably our biggest challenge and we've kind of overcome that. But we have started back to face-to-face -face meetings and a few things going on at kind of select as to those individuals and what they want from us. So um, in our services for individuals, we do a lot of financial planning and then small to medium sized business is kind of our niche market with some of the solutions that are needed there. And then for me, um, Cy Wakeman is great. I do believe there's something coming up with Women Lead Change here in Iowa that she is speaking. So check out that website. I, I think they're doing something virtually, so that, that'd, be, that'd be great. I'm also Big 12. I'm an uh, Iowa State grad, so uh, I'm, I'm pro-following anybody that's Big 12 University. And uh, what I'm reading right now is um, The Daily uh, Drucker by Peter Drucker. It was actually suggested by um, Dan Houston, our president and CEO, and it's, it's kind of 360 day, six days of insight and motivation for getting the right things done each day. So it's giving you focus to start the day as to what to accomplish and what to, uh, how to stay focused on getting some things done, especially in this environment. And uh, as for me, I am not a next Netflix person, so I have never seen Ozark, and I have not watched anything on Netflix, so I can't can't say that I'm I'm familiar with that. But uh, welcome to West Des Moines, and hopefully, hopefully someday soon we'll be seeing you at some in face events, not too too far off. <laughs> I hope so. Great to meet you. Great to meet you. Thank you so much, Anne. I'm learning so much. The Daily Drucker, gonna definitely check that out. That sounds really motivational. That's really cool. I hope they have a podcast. I'm a huge podcaster while I'm you know, doing chores around the house or getting dressed, yeah. So uh, super cool. Okay, uh, next on our list, we have Robert Renard, Bob. And, uh, hi, Bob. Rob, sorry, I'm calling sorry. you Bob. Your name is Rob. Happy Monday. Um, so Rob is Consumer Services Manager, Bankers Trust. He is a chamber board member and he leads our ambassadors. We have lots and lots of fans out there that love the chamber and like to talk about the chamber story and how we can help support our small, medium, and large businesses. So Rob leads that team. Good morning. Good morning and, and thanks for that. Uh, as an ambassador, again, for all of you listening, uh, if there's something that we can do as a chamber, please reach out to Catherine or myself because again, that's our role is to make sure our membership grows and that we're doing what we can to grow the business of West Des Moines. So again, reach out to us. I'm the chair, so I can certainly find some folks to help you out in uh, completing a task that might be, need some extra hands. Um, as she mentioned, I work at Bankers Trust Company. And while I've been here for 27 years, it's ironic that I've been here that long because I started my professional career. I was just making notes here. Um, in the first nine years I lived in my career, I was lived in seven different cities working for three different employers. So it was hop, skip, and jump 
for the first nine years of my career, and then I settled in Des Moines. And so, Ben, I think you'll find the same uh, idea, and that is that you work for a great employer, and you work, you've come to a great city to work. Um, when it comes to reading, uh, I'm more of a, I read uh, periodicals more to keep myself up to date on the economy and on banking. So those things, as you all know, continue to change, and no one knows where we're really at, much like the illness that we're trying to wrestle with. So that's always inspired me to keep reading. Um, also, I've just adopted a new, um, I guess it's something that he could go, Ben, you should go from two wheels to four wheels because four wheels are safer. Um, so I did, I just jumped in a boat with a bunch of friends who own Corvettes. And so I had to get one. And so I've been a, a Corvette owner now for just a couple months. And it's, it's been a, quite a passion. So more reading outside of economy and banking. It sounds like uh, a safer hobby. It's probably a good idea. It is safer. And with children, it's better to be on the safe side. Let's see, I work for a, gr a great organization in Bankers Trust. Uh, you'll find, I'm sure, as you come here, that Bankers Trust is well known in the community. We're a tremendous uh, supporter of the community, spending, uh, donating an addition of a million dollars every year to the community. Um, it's always a check with United Way. You'll find Bankers Trust at the top of contrib being contributors to United Way. Um, it's just one of the things that's inspired me over the years is diversity and inclusion has been a big focus of ours since before it was fashionable. Uh, we had a gentleman, uh, Mike Early was his, the president, came here in 1993, and that was his main focus. He's since retired, but it's just continued with the organization ever since. So, welcome to the community, Ben. Thank you so much. Well, I love that. And on that note, uh, Rob, I'm excited to introduce Angela Jackson. So Angela is a highly valued chamber board member on our executive committee, and she's leading our new diversity, inclusion, and equity group that we just started to help make change and raise the voice of underrepresented populations, specifically in the Black and African American community. And Angela is an entrepreneur, a business owner. She is a dynamo, and we're so excited that you have time to spend with us this morning, Angela. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Ben. Welcome to the West, the best place to be. Um, we believe that the West Des Moines community is the best um, suburb to work, live, and play. Um, I'm a business owner um, only because of race. <laughs> um, I've been an owner of The Great Frame Up, which happens to be a franchise. You might have heard of it, um, but we're the last uh, of the Great Frame Ups in Iowa. There were a few others that have opened and have since closed. We've been here um, in the West Glen Town Center location for 15 years. Um, I've been in Iowa, um, in August it'll be 21 years. Um, just like yourself, I was recruited <laughs> to come to Iowa uh, from Chicago originally. Grew up in that community, went to school in North Carolina. So I am a ACC fan, I went to Duke. I ran for Duke, walked on, so I'm a huge sports fan. And I think that what you will find in West Des Moines and you'll find in all of Des Moines, it really is a big, small town. So what I tell people when they move here is just assume that everyone that you talk to knows someone else. And not just as a neighbor, but they're probably like a cousin or a best friend. So that's my tip for you as you move and transition. Everybody in Des Moines knows someone else. Um, I grew up in Chicago, which is, you know, 3 million people, um, 1.5 um, million um, diverse in, individuals. So it's a, a huge shift for people who are diverse. And so I'm um, glad that the West Des Moines Chamber and other businesses have taken leadership in making it inclusive when people transition and um, hoping that you also feel included anything that we can do to help you, we will do, because that's what we do as a chamber. Um, the Great Frame of it itself um, has a lot of relationships with different businesses. We help people with wall decor, fine art, things of that nature in terms of framing and custom framing. The other thing that um, I enjoy is hosting art gallery shows, which due to COVID, we have not had any since February. <laughs> so some of the art that's on my wall has just been up here since then. Um, one of the things that we've done in the pivot is um, assisting people in obtaining PPE. So we're um, 
making masks, making colorful face masks. Um, we've um, been blessed um, to work with some West Des Moines business partners and uh, provide them with face masks, face coverings, and face shields. So that's the, one of the things that we have done. In addition, it's very helpful because it helps my staff stay employed. Um, and uh, I love Ozarks. I love Netflix. What I'm work, working on now is trying to complete a new series called The Protector. So if you haven't seen that on Netflix, it's pretty good. Um, I went through Shit's Creek already. <laughs> um, and I'm reading um, What Would the Rockefellers Do? And you probably heard of that one. But, um, and I'm also teaching a class ca called Growing in Prayer. Um, it's a, a book that I've read before, and I'm reading that um, with our team from church. So um, I just I love reading, and I love um, watching television. My husband and I um, have a son. He was going into his third year at Mizzou. And so it's great to have you, Ben, here in the community. And if you need anything, um, especially good places to eat, uh, give, us, give me a call. I appreciate it. So your son's just up the road from me then, right? Yep, yep. My husband's originally from um, Missouri at Columbia. So, yep, they're Mizzou. All, all the yeah. Yep. Great to meet you. So neat. Well, Angela's business is in one of our great shopping areas. And I'm sure your girls will know all of the great shopping areas of West Des Moines before you know it. Um, but she is located in an area called West Glen. There's a lot of cute shops, uh, restaurants. We are there too. The chamber's there too. Um, and of course, we have Jordan Creek Town Center, which is, you know, the behemoth, the shopping mall, and so much around there too. Uh, Historic Valley Junction is quaint, shops, restaurants, fabulous area. And then Valley West Mall is, is not only the mall, but kind of some neat places around there too. So we have uh, lots of great shopping choices and uh, you've got to go check out the great frame up. It's amazing stuff. Well, thank you, Angela. All right. So we would like to, Jennifer Smith, partner of SNS Employment and a chamber board member. Jennifer, Jen, tell us about how you're doing and what's going on in your life. Hello and welcome, Ben, and good to see so many friendly, familiar faces. Um, I am an Iowa native, grew up in small town Waverly, Iowa, which is northeast of Des Moines. I moved to Des Moines in 87, which I'm dating myself, but I went to AIB, um, a two-year business college, and I've been here ever since and have had a great ride in the business world. Um, I, in 2000, started working for a local employment firm and had a great experience and ride there for 16 years and in 2016 opened and co-owned SNS Employment Partners. Um, we're just a small boutique firm specializing in administrative, accounting and finance, sales and marketing and HR positions. Um, we do temporary, temp to hire, and direct hire, all different levels from entry to executive level, and really in all different industries from insurance, banking, financial, logistics, manufacturing, and everything in between. Um, we, like most companies, just with coronavirus, uh, we've taken it very seriously. And even though we're a small company, we did immediately pivot and our staff is working remote and we are planning our first phase of two to go back Monday, August 3rd to the office. Um, so much of our business is um, personal interactions. So for us, it's been a significant adjustment utilizing Zoom and technology for interviews and meetings, um, but it's, it's proven to work well. So. We're blessed that that has worked. Um, we'll continue just practicing that abundance of safety just because, you know, our typical world is people coming and going so frequent throughout our day. Um, so through the month of August, we'll continue, well, in the office, we'll continue leaning upon technology for interviews and meetings for the most part. There may be some exceptions. Um, and then if things look better in September world, we'll resume with kind of normal business, if you will. Um, 
for me, I love history. So books that I love to read are kind of more history based. I'm reading Color of Law, but um, those are the types of books that I read. My husband watches Ozarks. I do not. On Netflix, though, I do watch, and I typically watch documentaries. So I'm kind of a nerd, <laughs> but I love that stuff. So welcome. Good to have you. It's so nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. Well, speaking of technology, I'm going to have uh, Jamie Letzring have the floor. She just announced with the city a big uh, partnership with Google Fiber. Uh, yeah, thank you. So another nerd alert here along with t tacking on to Jennifer. Um, I, I also don't watch Ozark because it, I just feel like it, it um, makes my blood pressure increase so much. It's so tense. And then I, you know, can't sleep. And so I just, I, I had to give it up. I tried to get through it and I said, you know, it's not for me. That's okay though. Um, so I am the deputy city manager here in West Des Moines. I've been here about four years. Um, I came, uh, I've got about 10 or so, 11, 12 years of experience in public administration and I'm from Iowa, went to school uh, in, at Simpson and at Drake and then um, kind of made my way around in Minnesota and then back um, actually um, working uh, not far from Waverly in a community, um, Old Wine, and then came here to West Des Moines. And I have you know, some of my responsibility is pretty broad. Some of my responsibilities like our legislative work um, with our lobbyists, uh, local, or, you know, state and federal. Um, a lot of our strategic planning initiatives, which is where the Google Fiber announcement came out of, a derivative of our, um, the work I'd been doing on broadband. And then um, I guess from that piece, um, digital equity is something that um, I've been really passionate about and have um, found a lot of uh, great um, partners in, in uh, Google Fiber and Microsoft, uh, who has quite a significant presence here in, in West Des Moines. I have two kiddos, uh, 12 and 9, um, both, uh, well, my 12-year-old will go to Indian Hills, but um, we're from Westridge Elementary, so if you're still looking for homes, I recommend, highly recommend that elementary school. It's fantastic. Um, in fact, our city manager, Tom Haddon, uh, his son is also, um, you know, went to school at uh, Westri Westridge as well. As far as um, what I read, also love history. So anything David McCullough, Lewis and Clark, that's my, that's my jam. So I'm <laughs> like Ken Burns kind of stuff. That's where I sort of like to hang out. So um, nothing terribly exciting <laughs> for anyone there. Um, I will say that, and uh, kudos to Iowa Clinic. You know, we love having um, y'all in West Des Moines, of course. And I just love your online um, scheduling. Just moved my son's uh, back to school immunization appointment from um, August the 3rd to August the 10th. So easy, could do that online. And I, I know I, I can check in online and I just love how um, smooth and easy it is to make my own appointments with within your system. So I, I love that. That's something that uh, I can't do through Unity Point or uh, Mercy Hospitals, to my knowledge, anyway. Um, as far as, you know, our kind of innovative return to work, it's the same story that everybody else has been talking about. You know, on March 17th, we told everybody to go home, and some people said they would rather stay. So I think we maybe had less than four people that still wanted to come into city hall offices but for the most part nearly everyone took a laptop and just went home and it was pretty remarkable how quickly we were able to stand up operations um, especially thinking of city services being outward facing um, so it's a testament to our employees and kind of their resiliency um, to just pick up right where we left off um, some of us are back in the office now, though we don't really leave our office. So, um, you know, I go to the restroom and I have a little mask, you know, that I wear. So it's like Nancy Pelosi over here. I got one that coordinates with every outfit just about. But um, that's about as exciting as it gets within these four walls. So we have many people that are still working from home. And um, we're actually beginning to have those conversations this week. As a single mom, I've got two in school and I'm having the same problem that everybody else is, which is, what in the heck do I do 
um, about school and sending my kiddos to school or if they get sent home, if there's an outbreak. So what Tom and I have decided is that above, we may not have a policy, but above all else, flexibility is just going to have to be the name of our game because we have no other choice. You know, we have great people who work here and we can't afford to lose them. And um, through no fault of anyone's, this is the situation we're all in. And um, so if, if and when it's possible, um, we are gonna offer that maximum flexibility. Obviously there's some positions in public safety where we have less flexibility to offer, um, but we're just gonna work through it and, and we don't have any uh, uh, hard and fast rules, at least not yet. I, I can't anticipate that we will. The more flexible we have with our flexibility we have with our employees, the more buy-in we'll gain and, and credibility that um, you know, just we as employers really can capitalize on that relationship with our with our people. Um, you know, that's I suppose that's I think I touched on everything. Welcome, Ben. It's good to see you. Thank you so much, Jamie. I'll see you tonight at the city council meeting. There is one, oh, right? Yes. Is that yeah. right? Okay, good. I read the date right. Okay, good. Yeah. Always uh, so interesting to attend those. Thank you so much. And Bill Fry, we'd like to hear from you, Bill. Bill is Regional Retail Sales Manager with Bank Iowa. Yes, thank you, Catherine, and welcome, Ben. Um, great to have you here. As uh, Catherine said, my name's Bill Fry, and I'm with Bank Iowa. We're based right here in, uh, out of the uh, West Moines area. We're an Iowa-based bank. Um, we have 27 locations now across the state. Mm -hmm. And uh, I oversee the, the retail side of things for the, uh, the Des Moines area. Um, I work here in West Des Moines. I live in West Des Moines. And um, when we moved back to the area, we were looking at schools. And, and uh, at the time, I had a daughter in high school. Um, and we fell in love with Valley High School. And so that's why we ended up buying a house in, in, um, in West Des Moines. So, and we did, we looked around. So anyway, I think you made a, a great choice. Um, bank Iowa, we are a full service bank. So commercial, ag, um, uh, consumer, uh, the mortgage side. So you're, you've got a great time to be looking for a home because the, the rates are extremely attractive right now. So um, if you'd like some direction there, I could point you in the right direction. Anyway, um, uh, I do have some um, connection with the, uh, the Iowa Clinic. Uh, my brother is actually a, uh, a vascular surgeon there, um, Dennis Fry. So I always say that he, he got the brains and, and I got the looks. And um, so just kidding, he got both. But um, anyway, I, uh, um, Mark Reese, um, who's been the interim um, CEO there, he and I have been on uh, a few hunting trips together. So I uh, have a lot of connection there with Iowa Clinic, great place. And you, you are, uh, I know you'll be successful there and it's a, uh, I know you'll enjoy it there as well. So um, anyway, um, some of the, you know, with the, the, the different world that we're in now with COVID, um, with when when all of that started to to roll out we did keep um we kept our doors open so to speak we kept the drive up lanes open and there's a lot obviously that you can do with banking now via um laptop and phone and there's many ways to do banking so uh, we've been able to keep the doors open and um, actually have been busier than we've ever been um, with the, uh, the, the payroll um, protection program um, kept us extremely busy. There were some of the larger um, corporate banks in the area who um, weren't able to, to service their customers on the, with the payroll protection loans, and we were. And um, we opened record number of accounts, and, and just it was extremely busy. And during that whole time, um, I think people had a time to step back and look at their finances and, and mortgage rates. And so we've, the, uh, we've been, the, the refinance world on the mortgage side has been keeping us very busy. So um, we opened our doors up in um, uh, June 1st. And so um, folks, would, folks who were coming through the drive could enter our lobbies if they wanted to. So we've been back in business um, and 
uh, everyone is, we, we, we have our protocol in place, so we're taking temperatures in the morning with the scanning the foreheads and, and um, everyone has their, their PPE um, equipment. So, um, and we have oceans of sanitizers. Uh, so anyway, keeping the place clean. So um, uh, I would echo what you've heard here from a lot of the folks, just the, the our employees are doing an amazing job. And when we were so busy and working remotely, people really stepped up and um, it was great to, it's great to see. So um, I am, uh, as far as reading um, or Netflix, I can't, I can never seem to sit still long enough to, uh, to, to read a book. So I'm more of a magazine guy. I'll go with Rob on the periodicals, um, but uh, I love the outdoors. I love to fish and hunt garden. Um, and usually if my wife is, she'll, I've seen her watching Ozark, so I know what you're talking about, but I'm usually repairing something in the house or tinkering somewhere. And so that's, uh, that's my gig, but welcome. Um, I would love to introduce you to our uh, regional president sometime. So maybe when you get here and get settled a little bit, we can grab lunch and I'll introduce you to John Ratchin, Rathjen, our um, regional president. That'd be great, and uh, I don't. You may already know this, but uh, when we're here interviewing and touring the city, your sister-in-law was assigned to take my wife around to launch and to do some tours and things like that. And and I don't know if she knew what she was signing up for because my wife is extraordinarily <laughs> thorough, and so I think they've been texting for the last two months, you know, multiple times a day, finding out about absolutely everything. Uh, so she did. She probably didn't know it was to be a long-term relationship when she agreed to a launch, but. But she's been very kind and welcoming, and, and so it's a small right. world, yes. Yes, it certainly is. See, that's Iowa. That's West. That's Des Moines. So, um, yeah, her name is, that's my sister-in-law, Stacy. My wife is also named Stacy. So, if you, more than one Stacy Fry. It gets a little confusing at Christmas, but um, anyway. That well, is so West Des Moines, isn't it? Everybody it knows is. everybody. Everybody is connected, but I mean, you'll, you'll see this. It's just crazy. It doesn't take very long. I mean, it's... Uh, it's a very short period of time when you get to know absolutely everybody. Well, I'm excited to introduce you to David Leto. David is president of the Palmer Group, and uh, thank you so much, David. All right, thanks, Catherine. Uh, ben, welcome again. And uh, as mentioned, we uh, are a full so uh, service talent solutions firm uh, headquartered in West Des Moines with a second office in Cedar Rapids. And uh, in 2016, we became 100% employee owned. Uh, so that was a big, big deal for our company. We have about 80 internal employees, and then uh, we employ hundreds of uh, consultants and temporaries in the field. Uh, we do uh, temp, temp to hire, uh, direct hire placement, uh, executive search, uh, outplacement when companies are downsizing and need to um, uh, right size their uh, employment base. And then we also do IT services uh, and, and take those outsourced projects and, and build uh, from the ground up. So. Uh, that's a little bit about our company. I have three uh, children, 16, uh, 15, and 12. So I'll have two at uh, uh, Dowling in West Des Moines and then one at uh, Fort Hill School in uh, Beaverdale. So um, books, uh, I'm a big Pat Lencioni fan as, as well. Uh, we did the uh, Five Dysfunctions uh, book as a, as a leadership team, and it was really, really well received. Uh, getting ready to read uh, his new book called The Motive. Uh, I don't know if you've seen that yet, but uh, just ordered it and, and hoping to get that any day now. Um, just about, uh, I think it's about uh, uh, the reasons you are a CEO and, and what that means. So uh, looking forward to that. Uh, just finishing a book for the second time called The Drive by Daniel Pink. It uh, talks about people's uh, motivators. Uh, I've read that before and, and reading it again. It's, it's really good. Um, so we, uh, we also partner with the Chamber on the Your Turn. Uh, deal, which is uh, their intern program. So if anybody has college kids or, or people looking for work or, or young professionals, it's a great, uh, great deal. So I'm, I can't remember how many sessions are left, but there's quite a few. Maybe Catherine can speak to, speak to that as well. So uh, but again, welcome and, and glad to have you. Well, I'll have Kara speak to that. Kara is our Director of Workforce. Yeah. So we are officially halfway through the program this summer. Um, we've got a mix of events that happen throughout those summer months. We try to switch it up and offer not only programming through Lunch and Learns, but also networking events so they can get to know peers outside of maybe their own experience. 
Um, and then we do coffee with the mayor. So it's kind of a win-win because the mayor takes time out of his day to hear insight from these this new generation coming in and they get to share their um, opinions and their voice a little bit and say, hey, here's what I'm looking for when I choose where to launch my career post-grad. So, um, and then one thing that we did this year, and we are in our third year of your turn, is we actually opened it up to all college students. Previously, it was targeted towards anybody with an internship in the area, but obviously things look a little different with um, COVID this year, and a lot of of businesses here had to cut back on their entrance programs or some even eliminate them completely this summer. So it's it's been a lot of fun um, working with these students and we are very, very thankful to our entire team um, at the Palmer Group, um, at Palmer Group because we couldn't do it without your support. So thank you. And yeah, that's something that we look forward to every summer. Thank Welcome. you, Kara. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. And uh, Kara leads our West Des Moines Leadership Academy, Ben. So at the Iowa Clinic, if there are some leaders that you want to uh, have in that program, it's a nine-month program and is really one of the, the best in, in the state. It has an amazing reputation, and Kara leads the way on that, the programming, and we've got a lot of committees for them that help to make that just an incredible program. So. Well, this has been this has been so much fun, and Ben, we just welcome you to West Des Moines with open arms at our Welcome to the West event, and uh, you're going to love it here. Your kids are going to love it here. Your your girls and your wife, and it's so crazy how there's already this connection. <laughs> just people on the Zoom room here today is just it's just fantastic. Um, you know, Angela mentioned this. Our vision for the West Des Moines Chamber is we want to make West Des Moines the best suburban city in America to live, work, and play. And we are working on that every single day. Uh, we are a brand new chamber team, actually. Kara is our longest chamber uh, member with a year and a half uh, plus being at the chamber, but we are here to drive innovation, ideas, and really lead the way to make West Des Moines the best place in America. So we're uh, having a lot of fun, Ben. Like you said, work hard, play hard. I think Christy even said play harder. Uh, so yeah, love that too. And, and we're having a ball doing it. So we just welcome you with open arms. And, and uh, real quick, a few things coming up. I want to make sure you have on your schedule um, Liz Matty, Matney, who is health policy advisor for Governor Reynolds. She's going to be speaking to our group on August 13. And I mean, being the health policy advisor, I think that would be an amazing uh, story. She's going to tell her COVID story. I think, Ben, that would be a neat one to, uh, to hear, and she reports right to the governor. We have our first responders breakfast on September 9. We have Jamie Pollard, the athletic director of Iowa State University, uh, September 10, and uh, our women mentoring event on August 26, which we have 10 amazing women mentors. Um, and then also a news release item right now. If you haven't heard, we're doing a brand new awards event this fall called Best of the West. And we have 50 plus categories that Bailey and Kara and team have been working on. And this is gonna be voted on by the public. So we are going to highlight the best in everything from work, play, live, and uh, watch some really fun, exciting news on that. So any parting words, Ben? Uh, just uh, just thank you. It was really great to, to meet so many uh, high caliber folks here and I, I know you're all very busy and, and just taking a few minutes to, to be able to get to know me and, and vice versa it really means a lot. I think it says a lot for your community that you guys are, are willing to invest that time. So if there's ever anything I can do to help uh, uh, when I'm actually part of the community and here in a few weeks, I, I'm happy to. I hope you won't hesitate to reach out and, and I look forward to being involved and supporting you guys uh, any, any way I can. Thank you so much, Ben. Well, we highly value the Iowa Clinic. You have been a, a chamber champion for many, many, many years, as well as everybody on the line today. So again, thank you for your support in helping to make West Des Moines strong. So uh, we really appreciate it. And uh, welcome, Ben. And we wish everybody a great, safe week. Thanks, everybody. Take care, everybody. Thank you.